Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Zippo Artist Live Stream Series. My name is Danny Jordan. I'm your host. So stoked to be back for another conversation, another episode of Zippo's Live Stream Series for 2023. If you were here last month, you know we chatted with our good friend Guy Harvey. Got to check out his incredible new design. I'm sure many of you uh, picked up that design. Congratulations. You are are now an owner of an incredible piece uh, of, of Zippo lighter art. Congratulations. I want to know, where are you guys at? Where are you watching from? Last month when we had our first live of 2023, we had people tuning in from all around the world. I think we had Germany, the UK, all across the United States. I want to know, let us know in the comments here where you are watching from. Let's see how many countries, how many states in the US we have represented here today. And also, I want to know, I was thinking about this after our last live and just thinking about the culture of Zippo lighters and how many collectors there are out there. I want to know how many Zippo lighters do you have in your collection? Uh, for me personally, I'm sitting at a solid three right now, but uh, because of this live stream series, I'm so excited to add to that collection. So I want to know, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, I think it'll be fun for you all to sort of connect with each other and, and learn more about sort of where does your collection fall in line with other people um, who are who are huge Zippo Lighter fans around the world. And speaking of the comment section, you all are a huge part of these live stream events. I'm the host, I'm sort of the face of this thing, but what makes this really fun and unique is that this is an opportunity for you guys to connect with these incredible artists who are designing very, very unique pieces for Zippo Lighters. So please get active in the comments. If you have questions for our guest today, please drop them in there. I'm gonna source a lot of the conversation from what you all are sharing. If you're curious about the artistic process, about the collaboration process, um, anything. We want to see those comments, so please get active. You guys are a vital part of these lives that we do with Zippo. And speaking of our artist, I am so, so stoked uh, to bring this person in with us today. We are going to be revealing the design that this individual did for Zippo Liners. This guy, you know him, you love him. He has worked in the world of comics, gaming, live <laughs> art, nightclubs. His signature style has been seen in hundreds of publications, murals, and commission pieces all around the world. And just in time, Sean, for 420, you and Zippo have collaborated to present this limited edition 540 Fusion Lighter, which we're going to get into a little bit later, but this 540 Fusion style uh, is incredible. I, I I will tell you all, I have the lighter right here in my possession right here, and I have just been uh, oohing and awing over this thing. It is so incredible. The the vibrant colors, the metallic tones, uh, and it's marked with a limited edition 1000 insignia. And would you believe it, friends? Zippo was able to reserve 250 uh, units that you will be able to purchase at Zippo.com at the end of this live stream. So if you want it, you're going to you're going to want to get over to Zippo.com ASAP at the end of this live. But enough about that. Enough about me. Let's meet Sean Dietrich. Sean, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm here. I feel like your background is putting my background to shame here today. Uh, I did bring some friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, your friends are a little bit more eccentric than mine, I think. Yeah. Well, behind <laughs> the backdrop is the rest of my studio, and it has a bunch of my new art that I'm not okay. ready to debut yet. So, um, But uh, I thought uh, bring these backdrops out and might be a good, uh, yeah, something good for the stream. I thought you were going to say that hiding behind the, these backdrops are a few more of my friends. Um, yeah, right, and, yeah. And here they all are. Let's, let's bring them all <laughs> yeah, in. The real friends are behind there. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Well, I'm so, so stoked to chat with you today. And again, for all of our friends who are just jumping into the live, meet Sean Dietrich. If you have a question for Sean, please get active in the comments. We are going to be sourcing a lot of our conversation from what you all are curious about here today in terms of Sean, his artistic process what the collaboration process has been like with Zippo Lighters. But, you know, we'll, we'll kick it off here, Sean. You know, I want to know, you know, how, when did you get into art and, and how did you develop your artistic style? Um, I think like most artists, uh, a child. I was four years old when I told my mom I was going to be an artist when I grew up and uh, never looked back. I never wanted to <laughs> do anything else. Um, uh you know, my parents obviously tried to angle me towards different stuff, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, which I think is most parents terror, you know, when their kid says right. they want to be a rock star or an artist or 
they're like, oh, and you're going to make money at that how? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but it was something that I, I just took to it. Um, my mom worked at Kmart in the late 70s, early 80s, and oh, wow. always brought home coloring books. And uh, back then, like the truck drivers, like had their own like roadway and they would actually have kids coloring books that they would drop off at like the, uh, you know, uh, different stores. And so she anything she could get a hold of that was pen and paper and, you know, would just give it to me. And um, and I was off and running. So, um, wow. you know, um, that was. Yeah. And then when I was 15, I published my first comic book. I used all the equipment at the school, uh, the high school I was at. I was on the uh, school magazine. And back then we didn't have computers. This was the nineties. They were just coming out. So we had to lay everything out on like a blue board with like, you know, run everything through a wax machine and, um, and then, uh, yeah, just hit up the local comic book store and did new comic book day. So I was, um, uh, and I should have brought a picture of it, but I do have a picture from the local town paper of me sitting at the table, like, you know, local boy releases comic. <laughs> so, wow. And after that, it was, yeah, once you get that kind of a rush, I think that's, I think for a lot of us, they kind of deny everything else and just throw everything into the entertainment or industry or arts or, you know, whatnot. Right. Uh, it just kind of sticks with you and that's what you want to do. So um, from totally. there, I just uh, went for it. You know what I love, Sean, is that your mom was so supportive. You know, you were saying like sometimes a lot of parents would say, well, how are you going to make money with that? But the fact that your mom was grabbing you know, coloring books and, you know, all these tools to bring home to support you and this passion that, that you clearly had. I, I, I'd imagine it's got to have been a pretty cool process for your mom to see where you've gone as an artist that, you know, she supported you and encouraged you at that early age. And, and now you are a professional artist. That's such a cool journey. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And it was cool. Like as the years went on, I started doing, um, when I lived in San Diego, I did the San Diego comic-con for about 17 years. I'd have a little booth there, but, um, one time she did fly out for it and it was cool having her at the booth and people would ask about like the ink I use. And she'd be like, Oh, I remember cleaning that crap out of the carpet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, so it, it was nice to see that, you know, uh, uh, from just those coloring books all the way up to, you know, when I did get my first professional gigs and whatnot. That's so. amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. It's just, it's so cool. You know, the, the way that family, you know, supporting individuals, passions, you know, I, I had a parent like that, my mom, you know, supported me and my love of baseball all throughout childhood. And, you know, it just, it encourages you and empowers you, you know, as, as a human. So I'd you know, say anybody out there watching, you know, if your kid's showing an interest in art, and I'm sure you and I will get into this a bit later, Sean, is to, mm -hmm. To encourage them, you know, I, I think it creates this really cool opportunity for a bond between you know, parent and child and, and the arts are, are so unique in that sense. I, I don't know if you heard earlier, but when I first jumped on here, Sean, I was asking people how many Zippo lighters they have in their collection. And I've seen yeah. <laughs> some incredible numbers popping up here. Uh, I saw like somebody chimed in who is this uh, Kendall trying to do 56. And then I saw Riley checked in with 350 and then we had someone in the Czech Republic with over 2600 oh, wow. Zippo lighters. How many do you have, John? <laughs> um I have like the 17 I have with my designs and uh <laughs> and then the ones that I was uh, gifted when I went to Bradford, Pennsylvania a few weeks ago. I actually got to go to the Zippo factory and whoa. Um and they gave me some really cool Zippos uh, to take home. So, um I, I probably have a little over 20 in my collection right now, but wow. hopefully it grows, you know, I mean, once I saw some other designs and I went through their design center and was like, Oh, how do I get those? <laughs> you know? What was that like getting to go to Zippo's headquarters out in Pennsylvania? Talk it's me through that. Pretty iconic. Um, it's something where like, I'm a big world war two buff. And uh, mm. besides these crazy characters behind me, I, I do a lot of <laughs> world war two pinup work as well. So I kind of jump around stylistically and and I don't like to be pigeonholed as far as subject matter. So um, uh, I did, you know, um, I do a bunch of World War II pinup art and I knew every one of those guys that hit Normandy or whatnot had a Zippo with them. So it's, you know, when I first got the opportunity to work with Zippo, it was like, wow, this is kind of bringing the two worlds together. And then, you know, having my first Zippos come out were really cool. And then when I... Um, uh, got to go to the factory and the headquarters and the museum and 
seeing all the um, like the Zippo lighters in the case and all the you know uh, history in the museum, uh, it was pretty awesome. I mean, it's pretty mind boggling. Like right, stuff I have there such an iconic brand, and now you you know you're in the family, Sean. Like how cool <laughs> yeah. to be in the family with this iconic brand, Zippo lighters, and we are going to be revealing this new design today do you feel like we should give it to them now or do you want to maybe answer one question so we should we tease the audience a little bit what, what are your thoughts sean i'll let you drive this train oh i'm a complete sadist make them wait <laughs> make them wait you heard it here first folks uh, i was, can, about, I was about to pop and then you can show it all right <laughs> we had we had a really cool question that came in someone wanted to know uh if hunter s thompson influenced your art in any way um he, he did um in fact i in the early 2000s, I was in comics and I wrote all my own comics too. And Hunter was a big influence um, as far as my writing. And then Ralph Steadman, the guy who does all his artwork, uh, it's kind of a funny story. It's a, it's almost a reverse influence. So mm. I kind of had this crazy black and white ink style when I was doing comics. Um, I never did color. It was all like splash black ink. And then I'd use a razor blade to cut out the highlights and kind of almost like a scratch board and um oh, cool uh someone at a comic-con had commented like hey you know you, you know, ralph steadman was he an influence and i'm like who's that and they're like oh he did all the hunter thompson's art and up until that time i hadn't read any of hunter's books that had artwork in it like i had read all his political you know novels but nothing like i i, I think fear and loathing was maybe the fourth or fifth book that i read so right um when i finally saw ralph's artwork i was like oh it kind of does look like it was influenced by that. So, and then I think the more that I kind of read and saw his art, the more it kind of seeped into mine and um, cause he's a fantastic illustrator. And uh, so, but yeah, uh, Hunter is definitely one of my favorite artists. I, I read a lot of uh, Hunter and, and Hemingway and Kurt Vonnegut and Jack Kerouac. Okay. So kind of that, you know, group of writers. Yeah, I mean, your style is so fantastical. I mean, it's on display right behind you, and it's very <laughs> much on display uh, in this design. I feel like this is the time. I, I feel like, you know, we're almost halfway into our conversation. The people have been so patient. We have people all around the world watching. I, I've seen people from Turkey are here. We've got people in Scotland, Ohio, here in the U.S., as we talked about the Czech Republic earlier, the Philippines. Uh, Florida, New York. Amazing. I mean, these people are from all over. We're spanning the globe and they're all going to get a look, the first look at this design. I, let, let's pop the top. And I know our team's going to pull up some really beautiful images. There it is. There is the design. Oh my gosh. This thing is incredible. I'm pulling it out of the box because we got to, we got to show oh, off. Uh, here and I got the, I got the original here too. So while you show the lighter, Whoa. I'll, uh, I'll show off the original painting. I mean, this 540 Fusion is really, really cool, but I also really want what you're holding to. <laughs> so, yeah, she's called Mushroom Red. Oh, my gosh. Um, What's the inspo behind this? Um, you know, I was um, drawing, uh, you know, the Mushroom thing's big right now. Um, you know, The Last of Us on HBO and whatnot, um, which right. was really cool because I did that painting and then that show debuted about two weeks later. And so, like, everybody in the show was like, oh, is that inspired by The Last of Us? And I'm like, not really. Um, I, I do a lot with this girl, Vera. She's, like, my spokeswoman. You'll see about, if you go to my website, you'll see about half dozen paintings with this redhead that has, like, 35-foot hair. And so it was just her peering out from this um, kind of jungle of mushrooms. Um, I originally, bear with me one moment. Okay. Um, I forgot. I'm showing this off for all the people at home. Look yeah, at this is the original sketch. So this I did Whoa. at, um, there's a uh, smoke shop in Tallahassee called The Puff. And I went down for their 420 event and I was doing live art and sketches and signing some stuff. So um, I kind of doodled that out. And then I was looking for a new painting to debut like at the end of last year. And um, I was I saw that sketch and then... Uh, Zippo hit me up and was like, Hey, we, we want to do a, a special design. And I said, oh, I think I got what you're looking for. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and that's kind of how that there. You know, oh my out. gosh. So, we've got, we've got the big image up on the screen. I know some people were asking for a close up. Look at that. Yeah. The thing yeah, is incredible. Uh, how it, I love the 540 process, how the brass from the, the lighter yeah. shows through and it gives it that really cool, like antiquated metallic look. 
you know, as oh my if, gosh, uh, this thing's been around for like 50 years, you know, and yeah, th this 540 Fusion is it's absolutely incredible and it's cool. Like, you know, you see it on Chrome, it sort of gives like a cooler feel of the tone, and then you see it on the brass, and you got this like warm tone with yours here which yeah, is really really cool <laughs> um it's basically combining their fusion process with the 540 color process so you're getting like the best of all of zippo's proprietary technologies at play here so if you guys are wanting to add to your collection this is one that you definitely need to add 250 have been earmarked have been reserved by the team at Zippo and they'll be available at Zippo.com as soon as we wrap up here today. So make sure you go over to Zippo.com, make sure you get this. Uh, I'm so thrilled that, that I have this. And what's really cool and unique about buying yours through Zippo.com is you're also going to get a, a very special certificate of, of authenticity that is signed by Sean himself. So the other 750 aren't going to have this signed certificate of authenticity, but these 250 that were reserved by Zippo Lighters my friends, you're going to want to make sure you get in on that. Yeah, that was my homework when I went out to Zippo. <laughs> They're like, sit down and sign these. You know? <laughs> like, welcome to the office. You're, you're, to pay yeah. for the tour, you have to sign these 250 yeah. cards uh, really right, right over here. Um, so we've had a, a, a bunch of other questions that have come in, and I want to make sure that you know we are including the audience um, in this chat. Uh, we had a, someone asked, what is your favorite medium to create art in? Um, yeah, so I actually, I have some of the tools here I can show off. So um, a lot of my style was created um, specifically for doing live art. At, you mentioned okay. uh, when I was doing stuff at nightclubs earlier. Um, so back in 1999, 2000, around there, I started, I had my first comic book out and I started doing uh, live art at nightclubs. So my friends would DJ and I'd have like a board nailed to the wall. And then I'd sit there and paint while they DJed. And then I'd have a stack of comic books, you know, or my graphic right. novel, industrious side. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, selling a book. So <laughs> my problem with a lot of live art is I'd see these people do these huge paintings, but they'd be working on this tiny little section. Mm. And I'm like, what is it? You know, so the way um, I start, I start with a pencil sketch. So I'll, you know, supposed to win this painting in the background, I would sketch all those characters in pencil. And then I use a, uh, it's it's called Holbein. So okay. this is a Japanese ink. It's been around, I think the company has been around about 150 or so years. Um, oh, wow. I met the rep at San Diego Comic-Con. He came up to me when I was doing some sketches and he was like, hey, you're, um, what are you using? I'm like, Higgins Black Magic. He's like, try this. And it mm. is the most opaque waterproof ink I've ever used. Um, I'm able to... Uh, over top of the pencil, I take uh, a liner brush, which, you know, you can kind of see how thin that is. But yeah, um, that's what I use to ink the outline to get it to what I call coloring book phase, because at that point, it just looks like a big coloring book page. And then right. I start doing all the like all the drips and the washes in the background. And since it's a waterproof ink, um, I could just paint right over it and it just, you know, doesn't smear. Um, and then after that, I'll go in and do all the heavy shading. I'll give a shout out here to Trakel brushes they make the most mm. badass brushes on the market so nice um, some good paint brushes and uh and then i use some liquitex um acrylics for the color and then after that i go in with that liner brush and do all the you know um i can show you the brush so this is a skateboard i've been working on at the washington state fair oh wow a centipede wrapped around an owl but down here, you can kind of see the, let's see if I can get it close to the camera. That's how it kind of starts. And then I'll go in and, and get all this, you know, detail work, like all the line work around his face and whatnot. Um, wow. That's kind of the last part of the process. So, And has that always been your process as an artist to start with outlining and then do color? Because I am not, I'm not a painter. I will be the first to tell yeah. you, like, don't sit me down with paint because that's a disaster. But is that, has that always <laughs> been your style? And is that... Is that the most common way or does every artist sort of have their own way of, of, of going about tackling? Um, I, I think every artist has their own way. Um, me personally, I can tell you, I, I I don't know how many artists do it like I do, but I know I don't do it like most of the old masters or whatever. I didn't pay attention really in art in class. And <laughs> I kind of went out and did my own thing. And I've always That's been the that artist way. in you. <laughs> it's always been about more like comfort and what works well. Um, right. It's almost like, 
you know, uh, Nine Inch Nails had a great interview where it was like, we don't hire musicians who know, you know, uh, uh, A, E on the keyboard. It's fuck you. You know, it's it's more the passion. It's more the, <laughs> you know, like what's going to look right. well. And so I don't know if my technique as far as like if, it, if other artists use it or um, I, I mean, I, of course, I've seen artists like draw and then ink over top of it. But as far as doing the washes and doing whatnot. Um, yeah. I, and again, it all developed from keeping it interesting while I was live painting. So I would, you know, right. be in the club and I'd be like, you know, uh, do all the pencil and then do all the ink and then drop in the wash. And, and it would keep it really interesting for people who are wash, uh, watching. Um, right. And especially from a distance, you know, if you're in a club and there's 500 people and, um, you know, somebody's in the back, you want them to at least just not look at a white canvas. hundred percent. You know, <laughs> speak to us, you know, a bit about doing these live events because you and I got the chance to sort of connect the other day. And, you know, I know that you're out on tour uh, doing various festivals. You're doing you do concert festivals, you know, like, you know, Bonnaroo and Summerfest, you know, talk us through your, your upcoming mm -hmm. tour schedule and where people can potentially check you out. Live yes. Live so from nightclubs, it jumped into going on tour. Um, uh, it's been about 12 years now um, that I've been doing music festivals. Uh, another good artist buddy of mine, Vincent Gordon, lined up uh, Identity Fest years ago, which was like um, a big kind of electronic music fest. And that was my first time ever going out to these big amphitheaters and setting up in the you know vending area around you know the parking lot and whatnot and selling art and it, it kind of became an addiction it's really <laughs> really fun to get out there and paint live in front of fifty thousand people or you know whatnot so um so yeah um i leave in a few weeks i'll be at welcome to rockville in daytona uh the 18th through 21st of may sonic temple which is in columbus ohio may 25th through 28th and then mm. Summerfest in milwaukee it's the biggest rock concert you've never heard of <laughs> um it's like nine hundred thousand people and yeah part of the year before woodstock but i haven't yeah when i first started doing it i was like oh is this a new festival and they're like no we predate woodstock <laughs> so, <laughs> um but it's three weekends so it's the last two weekends of june and the first weekend of july and it's uh okay uh, i love milwaukee it's a really cool city so oh my gosh no i i was fortunate i you know, I produced TV shows and I was there doing a show about a family of blacksmiths a few years back. And we were right, their shop was right next to the Summerfest stages. So I was right in that hub, right in the third ward. Uh, for anyone out there who's never been to Milwaukee, like there's a lot of cool history um, yeah. in that town. Uh, and I'd imagine for an artist, it's got to be inspiring just because, you know, with all the old factories that are there yeah. in Milwaukee and like you the said, Summerfest. Any, yeah. yeah, anyone out there who's like, the cool thing about Summerfest is that like, you'll see Aerosmith on one stage and then it'll be like sublime on another stage and then Hanson, you know, like the boy band from like <laughs> 1990s on another. It's just like, you never know who's going to pop up. And then you get to see people like Sean, uh, you know, putting on these um, incredible live art displays. You shared with me the other day, um, you talked about uh, art battles. Can you tell me and everybody here a little bit more about, I was like, I've got to see this. Like this just, I, I want to see artists going head to head. What What is an art battle? Um, so I, I went to Brisbane in 2015. My tour manager is out of Brisbane. And he's like, come on down to Australia. Let's get you down here and out and about. He was opening a bar at the time. Um, there was a Sydney Comic Con was going on. So he kind of lined up. One of the things he lined up was called Scribble Slam. And it was a, uh, it was an art battle. So basically... Mm -hmm. The concept was two artists. We each get a seven foot by seven foot wall. Okay. And we have, uh, I believe it's 45 minutes, half hour break, 45 minutes. And spray paint, markers, acrylic, whatever medium that you want to use. And um, then they had everyone judge uh, in the bar. Like everybody, you know, oh yeah, cheer for which one they liked. Right. Um, what I did is I went down, my tour manager was good friends with Steve Falco, the guy I was battling. So we met up beforehand and I said, why don't we do a little something? Why don't I not be the American that wants to come in and pick a fight? <laughs> you know, and uh, I said, why don't after the half hour break, we switch and collaborate on each other's. Whoa. And we didn't tell the promoter. So we just, uh, you know, took our half hour break, did a shot, came back and I jumped on his. He jumped on mine. And then we just like added to it. And the guy was like, oh, and they're back. Wow. And oh, and they're working on each other's, you know, so. That's um, incredible. It was really cool. And then they gave uh, the prize packet was like a bunch of caps, a bunch of markers, um, gift certificate to the bar, which I think we ended up just going.
going up and being like, we have 250 bucks. How many shots can we buy and give them out? And then oh, that's all awesome. the local graffiti guys were there and I can't fly with spray paint and markers. So I gave out all my uh, materials that they had gifted me to them. And, but oh, that's, that's so essentially cool. what an art battle is. If you twist it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love the collaboration aspect. If people want to see photos of what you guys created, does that live on your social media anywhere? Can they check it out uh, on your Instagram? Yeah. Or? I think if you scroll back to 2015 on Facebook or Instagram, it's there somewhere. Um, just grab yourself a yeah. sandwich and just keep swiping and, <laughs> yeah, then, exactly. and then you'll, you'll get there. And, and if people do want to check you out, make sure you go uh, to at Sean Dietrich on Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. You also do something really, really cool, Sean, which I want to make sure we, we take a couple moments to, to chat about before we wrap up is that sure. uh, you've been going live uh, on Twitch, twitch.com slash Sean Dietrich, and you've been live painting. You've also turned that into a really cool place to educate uh, young up and coming artists, you know, of all ages, from all walks of life, you know, talk, talk us through what the inspiration was for that. And maybe some cool moments you've had, uh, through, through now being a, a teacher. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, pre pandemic. I started, um, I figured, you know what, if I'm going to get work done, why not aim a camera at it? Um, <laughs> I seen Alex Pardee on Twitch and that's how I kind of was like, what is this? You know? And, my little brother is a big gamer. So he was like, oh, it's, you know, it's where people go and watch people play video games. But, um, uh, but yeah, it um, allowed me and honestly, the workload I would get done just committing mm -hmm. to being on Twitch five hours a day or, you know, four days a week or whatnot, I would crank out the painting. So I, I really like the platform because it's like a good discipline for me. Uh, what mm -hmm. happened was, is I started to get a bunch of artists that were up and coming would come on asked me about my career. Oh yeah, I tour, I do this. Oh, I have a question. And it turned into this um, uh, just meeting place for artists. Uh, we have a discord as well where people can uh, share their art and get critiques. And um, um, and uh, yeah, there's a couple of artists uh, that I've worked with that are now uh, doing very well in their careers. I've kind of guided them through um, uh, you know how to price their art, which is a big problem for a lot of artists, how to sell your art. If you're a shy person, you're not very outgoing. Um, I just tell them, Hey, everybody's got that obnoxious friend, bring them in <laughs> I'm them some beers. They'll sell for you, you know, but just giving them like actual real world advice, not go get a job with Disney and that's your only option or go to the right. art Institute and spend a grip of money. And then hopefully you get a career. You know, it, it, it's really just about giving artists like different options and really showing them the nitty gritty of how to do it yourself as opposed right. to, um, getting an agent or, or just, you know, having to go to art school, not everybody can afford it, you know, and true. Um, and cause it, it really is overpriced. You know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, what a cool time that we live in that you as this professional working artist, that people all around the world that maybe would have never had a chance to encounter somebody like you can now mm -hmm. not only interact with you, but can get guidance. And now, as you shared, you know, people are turning this into a career. Cause I mean, I've done Google searches on stuff like how much should you pay for an original work of art? And like the numbers <laughs> are literally like all over the place. So I think, you know, there's so many artists out there, you know, I know as like a creative person, you just sometimes feel so grateful that somebody's just willing to buy your stuff. You're like, $20? Like you, you just don't know. So I think yeah. having someone like you to help guide them because look, art and commerce can exist together. And, and if you make money off of it, the more you yeah. can do it. So I think having someone like you to help guide is, is so, so vital. Has there been like one specific moment like sticks out in your mind of like, wow, I made a real impact on this person's life. Um, well, I was seeing some of the chats pop up. There's a guy in there now, <laughs> Kyroon. Uh, he, he's out of uh, Memphis. Um, uh, Artists that tuned in from almost the very beginning sold, you know, some originals for a couple hundred bucks. And then I remember him writing and being like, I sold my first original for 1500. <sighs> and then uh, now he curates a bar called Canvas over in Memphis and which is like an art bar. And he helps. So he's helping to now bring artists in and getting their work on the walls. And wow. so it's, it's awesome to see this. Um, and then my buddy, Kai Martin, uh, Kai Martin Art, I'll give a shout out to him. He's been touring with me for a long time. And he's an artist that, yeah, I met at a couple of live gigs. And we, uh, yeah, we, I brought him up and brought him out. And now he's off and running and he does all the big shows. And so it's really cool to, um, and as an artist, I can tell you, 
Uh, I love doing it because too many artists out there are very protective of what they do and they're very defensive mm -hmm. and they don't like giving info because they think, oh, they're, that's my competition. But I'm right. confident enough in my art <laughs> that I don't mind giving my advice out there. You know, it's up it's up to the person to take it and do something with it. So, um, which, you know, yeah. that's where the insane amount of work comes in. But I have no problem doing that and I love doing it. So I think it's a great direction just in general is that, you know, the gifts that are meant for you are for you and, you know, a rising tide will raise all ships sort of situation, which I love that you mm -hmm. subscribe to that. And who knows, maybe some of these artists that you've been mentoring and guiding, maybe they'll have their own you know, <laughs> Zippo lighter someday, just like you. All begging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so if you want to get your hands on this, friends, you're going to want to go make sure you go to Zippo.com. We're going to be wrapping up here just a moment. There are 250 pieces that were reserved by Zippo and they uh, they come with a signed certificate of authenticity, which is signed by Sean himself. Um, if you love what you've heard here today and you've just seen Sean's work and you want to know more about it, please go to SeanDietrichArt.com. If you're going to Google, make sure you look up Sean Dietrich Art so that we can get directly to him. You can also uh, watch him stream twitch.com slash Sean Dietrich or follow him at Sean Dietrich on Instagram. We also I want to make sure you guys go check out Zippo on Instagram. Original Zippo is the handle. Also, we are also at Zippo on Twitter. Uh, we're doing these live streams uh, every month this year. We have another one coming up on May 17th. That'll be at uh, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be back for that to chat with another incredible artist who will be sharing more about their process and uh, the cool design that they have done for Zippo lighters. Uh, Sean, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to you for taking the time, showing off your work. Uh, this has been an absolute blast. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've been looking forward to this live stream for a while now. And uh, uh, yeah, appreciate you hosting. And the interview was awesome. Uh, and of course, thanks to Zippo. I'm having an awesome time putting out designs for them. And uh, I look you know, forward to many more of these. Me too. Like I said, next one will be May 17th. So if you're not following Zippo on social, Facebook, YouTube, make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow. So that way you get the alerts for the next time we are going live. And if you have questions, please keep posting them in the comment section. Uh, the Zippo team will be getting back to all of those questions that are coming in. But for now, head over to Zippo.com. Uh, secure your lighter. This thing is stunning. Uh, this has been a blast. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to our second artist live stream of 2023. My name is Danny Jordan. And we will talk to you guys again real soon. See you guys. <laughs> See ya.